Hello, everyone. Um, we're probably going to give a couple minutes for people to trickle in, but I wanted to sort of get faces on screen rather than just leave you sitting at the uh, title card. Um, so I'm Evan Anderson. Um, I'm a software engineer who's been working on the Knative project for the last couple of years. But um, today, I'm going to be exploring Sonoboy, um, a project I know almost nothing about. And with me is um, Gustavo Franco, and go for it. Hey, folks. Yeah, so Gustavo Franco, Senior Manager uh, for Site Reliable Engineering at VMware. And uh, yeah, happy to be here to explore Sonoboy, talk a little bit about some of the uh, the plugins in, plugins, in particular reliability scanner that we've been working on. And uh, yeah, like interested in use cases and things that we've been doing, and also ready to explore. Let's see. Oh, we've got, see, we've got a lot of people um, staying up late to see us. So that's really awesome. Um, hey, Morteza, Tehran, sounds like uh, you're probably very early in the morning. Helsinki, Morocco. Uh, yeah. So yeah, it's sunny and super warm outside in Seattle. So um I hope everyone else is having weather that they like. I'm good for about one week of warm, and then I'm back to wanting cold. I don't say warm enough in Mountain View, California, but uh, definitely getting warmer. And for those of you who don't, um, who aren't familiar with this, um, we have shared notes. Um, there's a little banner. Uh, do this, haha, even with mirror mode. Um, so you can add to the notes as we're going along. Um, I'll be going through and cleaning them up at the end. But if you all want to put comments in there in the meantime, uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, it'll, it'll be a help, any links and so forth that you want to add. Um, you need to click on the little edit button on HackMD, and you may need to sign in to GitHub or you know, any of the other ways of signing in there. And let's see, we are getting pretty close to, I guess I will pr bring that up. Let's see. Uh, Awesome. And yeah, we are we are light in the Kubernetes and cloud native ecosystem news for the week right now. Um, to be honest, I was on vacation for the first half of the week, so I just kind of uh, ignored almost all the news going on. But um, I'm sure the people out there have been doing interesting and exciting things. The only reason I know that there was a Knative release actually last week was that I was doing it um, before I took some time off. Yep. I thought I had signed in. Well, let's see. We're going to hide that for just a moment. Oh, there we go. Sign in was faster than I expected. I'll be using those later, but um, looks like we've got a decent number of people online um, watching, so uh, We're going to get started um, with the week in review. So um, this might be last week's news, but cu the Kubernetes release is out, uh, 121. Um, after 122, um, there's a cap here that's linked. Um, and uh, Kubernetes is going to be three releases a year rather than four. So um, you know, you will only have to upgrade 
every four months rather than every three. Um, and I know that that is going to make a lot of system administrators happy that uh, it's a little easier to keep up with the pace of releases. Um, sort of a tension here between it's always nice to be able to get new things into people's hands as a developer and, you know, hey, you're working on stuff and you want people to get out there and like give feedback on it. Um, on the other hand, it can be really, um, you know, it can be really tiring to say, hey, I just rolled out this release and it's like, you're already out of date. Time to go back again. And, um, you know, it's a little harder to uh, update a cluster than it is to update your web browser. So uh, there's also a container vulner container D vulnerability out there. If you haven't seen this CVE, um, the summary is that um, you can deadlock container D if you ask it to fetch a container image that has a bad layer um, that's not a tar archive. And so um, I believe that there are new, this affects I think both Podman and CRIO. Um, and so if you, if you are using one of those and letting people choose what images to load, you may want to be uh, careful Uh, yeah, so there's there's a little question in the chat. Um, I'll just pop it up here. Um, it looks like I'll just play. Do you, um, I don't know how much of that is video compression. Um, I see that someone's complaining the font is blurry. Hopefully making it a little bigger will help. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, there's the upgrades that you that you get because we ship new feature because Kubernetes is shipping new features, and there's the upgrades you get because there's a vulnerability. Um, and yeah, um, for those of you who aren't already registered, um, there's a virtual KubeCon EU um, in a couple of weeks. There's still time to register, um, and uh, the the if you are on a budget and you're like, I don't know if I want to attend. Um, the keynote, keynote and showcase, showcase tickets are absolutely free. And then the regular tickets are $75 because these virtual events, um, they don't have to pay for like a big area to rent and so forth. It's mostly just internet infrastructure. Um, and then I mentioned in the Kubernetes and cloud nat native ecosystem, um, Knative is out. Uh, you know, has a new release. Um, every six weeks we do a release and um, yeah, it's it's like clockwork, a um, little faster than the Kubernetes frequency. But uh, I don't have any other news. Um, I didn't see any news in chat, but if anyone wants to throw news in there. Um, and I see, um, I see Vladimir is here, so um, let's uh, let's close this up. And yeah, just about context, right? So yeah, Vladimir Lids, uh, Sono Boy. So we're embarrassing ourselves here, <laughs> uh, or we're about to. But uh, yeah, we count with uh, Vladimir being here to help us out. Yeah, um, it's always nice to have someone here who's. Uh, actually familiar with the software as we go bumbling through it. So for those of you who aren't familiar, um, Sonoboy uh, is the tool that, you, that Kubernetes uses to run conformance tests. Um, and it's not just a tool for running Kubernetes conformance tests, but that's where most people probably know it from. Um, and so the basic model of Sonoboy is um, that it will, you do some testing, and uh, as I understand it, um, you do some testing, and those all come as containers, and they get run on the cluster, and then it will pick up the results from, from plugins and display them. Um, and let's see, getting started. We will start probably with 
just making sure that this stuff is working. So let's see. Nice to see that we are continuing the tradition of zero point high number releases, just like we're doing in Knative. Uh, Linux AMD 64. And I've got an existing um, Microsoft Azure um, Kubernetes cluster. So I'm going to be using that. It's got three nodes. Um, yeah. And while you do that, yeah, let me call out for folks like uh, Sonoboy is uh, interesting. So there's a both a plugin framework, so it's extensible, and also different modes, right? That you can run Sonoboy even without leveraging the plugin architecture. Uh, so the end to end mode uh, has, if I'm not mistaken, Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, there is a non disruptive mode that uh, folks use to make sure that the Kubernetes uh, installation conforms with the Kubernetes specification. So you kind of have both a non-disruptive one, a one that could be disruptive, and one mode um, that checks for conformance with this pack, basically. How's the font now? Is that working a little better for people? Um, I can read it. I don't know if the if folks have problem reading. Uh, I think see. the GitHub, yeah, GitHub is harder to read. If folks have yeah. any reading, let us know. Yeah, do let me know. Um, I have been told that I have good eyes, um, so I tend to have itty bitty fonts. But I know that doesn't show up as well for streaming. So um, let's see. And to get started, they suggest uh, just doing this. Hopefully, this will not eat my cluster. Hey, look, at your cloud shell. It doesn't put dot in your path by default. That's actually a nice feature. And let's see. While that is running, I like to. I like to get another cloud shell going and do a Q control watch. Um, and you'll see that I also have Knative installed here. Uh, oh, but yeah. And if I'm not mistaken, uh, the default, so you're just running and waiting. Oh. So you install the object is gonna run the end-to-end -end checks, but I think it's in non-disruptive mode. That should be the case. Um, uh, mode quick. Oh, I probably should. Yeah, you haven't done mode quick. quick. Yeah, you haven't done that. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe I should. Yeah. Is this safe to control C out of? You're going to have to delete the objects, if I'm not mistaken. Vladimir can correct okay. me if I'm wrong. But yeah, you would have to delete the, the son of one. Looks like. Uh, oh, this is a namespace that it was created. Um, and then it looks like everything. Oh, there's some cluster role bindings that I'm going to need to delete this. And then looks like most of this stuff is namespaced. So that should help. Um, just looking at all my pods. And hmm. So each pod, it looks like, is or each plugin is a separate pod in the cluster. Um, it looks like that namespace is going to take a little while to delete. Um, so my service account. 
Uh, looks like we have a cluster roll and a cluster roll binding as well. I am inclined not to. Ah. Let's see. Control delete. Uh, Okay, so now we're going to try <laughs> Mode equals. suggesting uh, using a kind cluster um, in order. I think Willie was suggesting using a kind cluster in order to just be able to blow away the cluster and create a new one, uh, yeah. which is great for testing. Um, but it's really easy. I definitely get into this habit of, oh, just blow away the cluster and create a new one, uh, which is great until you're using it in production. And then it's like, oh, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> OK, so now we're running it in quick mode. Uh, let's see what namespaces I've got. Um, I'm going to guess this pods one and the schedule preemption one are um, ones that Sauna Boy has created. Or my last run created. Uh, let's see. Schedule preemption. I did not. Did not enable audit logging here. OK, so let's see. It looks like it's run. Um, and then it looks like, uh, I want to see what this does. You're going to get the uh, tarball file name. But yeah, go for it. Oh, OK. Well, then that's pretty boring. OK. Uh, oh, son of boy, delete. Nifty. <laughs> uh, I'm seeing Willate suggesting that treating you should treat your production as immutable. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> you don't get to keep it doesn't get to be immutable for all time unless you're not shipping any new software. Um, aha. And here's how to clean it up. Um, this can be changed, which check out our page on the end to end plugin. Um, and then here's custom plugins. Oh, and it's nice to see that I can use Son of Voice status instead of actually needing. Um, instead of needing to just wait for it and look at it from the side. Um, Docker hub rate limits is good yeah. to know. Hopefully, we won't. Run One thing that it might be worth clarifying, like, what did it do, right? Like, we don't know what it did in, in quick yeah. mode. I know it went to end a test for a lot of stuff, it right? It's passed. Really it passed one test and skipped all the others, it says. Yeah. But and what is that uh, test? Right? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't say what the so test is. It's big and clarifying. Yeah. Do you want to tell me where, where to look for that? I don't know. We need to figure out Vladimir. <laughs> <laughs> he's, on, he's, he's, he's on chat, so he will tell us. Boy status. <laughs> OK, and then you son of boy retrieve to retrieve the results. That's a very, um, yeah, that's. Uh, Let's see. Is there a way? Um, oh, uh, was that Willie? You said um, it was creating namespace. Um, was that just by looking at the code to see what Quick does? Uh, 
it would be nice if this output, uh, let's see. Well, that doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> okay. Um, avoid header prefixes. Yeah, none of this looks like it particularly helps. Um, so um, I think Stratus Gustavo here has been uh, actually using um, has actually been using Sonoboy and Anger. So do you want to talk a little bit about um, how that works? What you've been using it for? Yeah, sure. Um, so the uh, the VMware CRE team has been building a reliability scanner uh, plugin uh, for Sonoboy. When you talk about reliability scanner, it's not like if it passes, you know, your cluster is reliable. What we're trying to do is identify um, reliability risks, basically, uh, through software. So then people can run Sonoboy across multiple clusters and get a report of reliability risks. Um, so let me share a little bit how this works for us. Let me know if you want to. I can either run something for you, or you can share your own screen if you want. Yeah, let me try to share my screen, and then I'll tell you. One second. OK. Can you see that? There we go. You're gonna, you should make your font a little bigger. OK. Uh, for those of us who don't have super laser vision. Let me edit this session here. I actually, I, I like to call it laser vision. I got LASIK, but mostly because my when I had my son, he liked to grab the glasses off my face, and that was really irritating. So <laughs> I was like, okay, now okay. it's now it's really going to be a problem. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's not working for me to increase my font on my eye term. Um, can you shrink the size of the eye term? Just sure. grab the corner and there you go. Better. Now the font looks bigger. That's clever. Okay, cool. So pretty simple, but just to kind of show um, the URL, right? So yeah, it's on GitHub, VMware tells you, Sonoboy plugins. Reliability Scan is one of the plugins, so you just download. You can just clone off them. So that's, you know, through VMware, you clone them. Um, and let me show you and kind of get you through the config. So within the reliability scanner, we have the concept of reliability checks. So basically the risks, the things we're checking for, and that's an ever growing list. So one is backup freshness. So is this cluster being backed up using Valero? So that's something that Sonoboy, the reliability scanner, once you run, it will check across you know, this cluster. But if you run across multiple clusters, right, it's a cool report to get like, okay, uh, which backups are fresh. And by fresh, it's both looking for expired backups if you have the, a TTL set on Valero. And we're also about to implement a max age. So you can overwrite, uh, you know, here. So we're going to have a, so right now, spec backup namespace. We're going to add a max age. So if you're like, yeah, I really want to check all the backups are older than, I don't know, a day, a week, no matter the TTL on Valero. Uh, so that's something that Sonoboy uh, can do for you with the reliability scanner plugin. So backup freshness is one thing that, we are implementing um, pod disruption. So basically, do you have uh, all of your pods covered under a disruption budget, right? Uh, so people generally ask, include detail, what does that mean? So include detail equals through is for the report, you don't just get a pass or fail. You get a list of pods that are included or not in a pod disruption budget. We haven't really implemented a filter yet, but uh, it's probably a good idea, right? You can filter out or just you know include or exclude uh, in scope there. And uh, the QoS check is basically a minimal desired QoS. Like you can run against one or multiple clusters. Like I want to have a minimal QoS of guaranteed. Uh, and same thing, include detail. It's not just to pass and fail. We're going to include in the log. Uh, in the output, it will show you the, the pods that are, say, failing, not passing the check, right? Um, other thing that you know could be uh, uh, considered reliability risk is that you may have namespaces without an owner. Um, so then checking for an owner label. So this is more like a matter of policy, right? So if you want to have a policy and kind of scan for who's conforming to that uh, policy. And probes. 
Um, so do we have probes, liveness, readiness probes? Um, so back to all those things are not super difficult to do manually, to check manually. But I think it's cool that in aggregate, you get this like YAML config and then you can kind of, you know, you get a reasonable default and you can run Sonoboy with a reliability scanner and then boom, it's going to do kind of all of this uh, at once for you. You don't have to kind of the SRE approach of, you know, eliminating toy, right? So this eliminated a lot of toy of checking for configuration mistakes. Of course, ideally, it will be impossible to make such mistakes because you will be creating the cluster uh, or creating your clusters in a way that prevents this. But we know in reality, right, you kind of need checks and balances, right? So ideally, you create the clusters to avoid this, and then you have the tool to kind of scan for all of your production clusters. My experience uh, has also been that uh, over time, you add checks here um, based on hard-won experience of, you know, oh, gosh, maybe that thing was important. We should check for that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, once you've discovered that, you know, oh, hey, QoS is important, um, we should make sure that everything that is, you know, a serving namespace or something like that has QoS set, then you need to go back over and actually go and check that. And you can set a policy to protect things going forward, but that doesn't help all the stuff you already have. Exactly. Yeah, 100%. And uh, so how do we run this thing, right? So then we have basically a basic shell script. We we have uh, three clusters. We're going to do like a backup uh, uh, example thing. So like imagine if you just had in your config uh, the, the backup freshness check on top. Um, and so we have kind clusters here. Uh, the plugin uses YTT, which is part of Carvel, right? So for a uh, template. So think of like, you know, template, adding template template uh, uh, to YAML. Uh, but it's running Sonoboy behind the scenes. And uh, so was that cool? Would be also be running? I, I love ideas. So I like I got distracted because yeah. I saw an idea for a check and I'm like, wait, like, <laughs> oh no. I thought this was interesting and we might try to oh, do yeah. this. Uh, once you've once you've shown oh, this, yeah. I was going to, um, mm -hmm. you know, pull down the Sonoboy repo and like develop a plugin to mm -hmm. go and check this and say, hey, you know, do you have any pods that are more than, you know, X hours old? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, yeah, I I love ideas for checks. Uh, we have a list, I think, on the repository of things that we want to implement. The backup is super recent. Peter Grant was also on chat implemented this uh, yesterday, I think. Um, so then, yeah, we do run, and it's like it's gonna basically refresh um, the. Uh, so it's deleting Sonoboy and switching the contacts to the clusters. So we have three kind of clusters. So I'll let that run. I won't pause here because I have the output for you. Um, so I'm diffing uh, a cluster with all backups, so no backups log, and a cluster with backup. So I have two log files here to diff to show you. Uh, ah, there's a lot there. No. Ah. Okay. I think. I find diff dash u a little easier to read. I don't know if. Yeah. No, because <laughs> like we, uh, of course, be right before the JIK we're running this. I think I, uh, I, you know, it's spooking me because it's not the output I was expecting. I was expecting a much shorter one with all the, all the timestamps, but uh, let me see if that's what I want to show. With all the diff, I can actually show like no backups. So you can clearly see if I have no backups, so I'd show no backups defined. Um, that's what I want to see, right? We don't have backups in that cluster, in the no backups cluster. Uh, in the backups log cluster. Uh, Looks like you ran this with a verbose. Yeah, that's where we have a that's log. The, that's, that's the output of Sonoboy logs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You might need to run mm -hmm. Sonoboy results. If you look in that backups.log, again, it's, it's at the bottom. Right I have it running right now. Oh. So it's not going to, yeah. So it's, it's not overwriting this file. It's overwriting one directory up, but we're going to have more. So we're going to have fresh results. But yeah, I think this. This shows that if you don't have backups running this log, then it's going to show no backups to define. It shows you the name. It's Valero. Uh, and uh, so that's what we want to see, right? No backups. Backups are failing. 
I will show backups.log from here once it's, it starts running because I have the runner here still going. Oh no, it's finished. Okay. So let's see what we're going to find here. Uh, okay, yeah, no backups, still no backups. The uh, expired, probably not expired yet because. It said it's. Yeah, it's expired. Fail. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I don't know what happened to the. Uh... Oh no, I, got, I have the no backups now, finally. Oh, no. It was backups that you were having trouble with. Yeah, backups, yeah. Um... And it looks like it expired. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the backup expire, which makes sense because I do have an expire backup in the expire backlog. Let me diff backups and expire. Oh, it's the same. Yeah, that's not what I intended quite. Um, but. Yeah, if I run it again, I don't think it's going to make anything different. But hopefully people can get the gist of it that uh, <laughs> expire backup is expired, right? Yeah. <laughs> it failed, right? It's failed because it expired. Um, it no like backup. Maybe two backups, um, Peter Grant says. Uh, OK, we had two backups in the cluster, I see. Uh, yeah, so no backups. We don't have any backups to find. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Uh, Peter uh, put the demo together for us. Um, so yeah, no backups, as you can see in the logs, it fails because there are no backups to find. And this is exactly what we want. And then we get the name of the backup, which is Valero. Um, and when we look into expire backup, we can see that it's also failed because it is expired. The backups one, that's the one that we wanted to pass, but it's failing because it's saying that it's expired. Uh, and that's probably because we're pointing that to an expire backup and not a um, fresh Well, you've backup. got two items, one that's example that's passed and one that's ex expired example, if you look in your log. I'm not sure why you have two items there, but there, are, there were two items, one that was passed and one that was failed in that, um, in that log. Yeah, we have Valero fail, no backups defined. And that has an, one item that's named example where it's passed, mm -hmm. and one item named expiry example where it's failed. So it looks like you had two of them at the same time in the cluster. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's just left over from testing, so I don't know the state now. Um, but yeah, I can clean this up. Do you have that cluster? And then we can clean it up and, and show it again. Um, do you want to do that while maybe we take a pass at um, uh, Philip's idea of a running time check? Sure. Yeah. Are you going to do that and then do the cleanup? Yeah. OK, cool. All right. So um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the gh command that's github's official cli and it makes it really easy to clone and fork repos uh, so if i uh if i wanted to um let's say uh it'll detect that you already have a fork and ask if you want to clone that one now i'm actually going to cancel that out because i no one wants to watch me pull down all of kubernetes onto a cloud shell instance um, but let's see, ton of white plugins. Um, And uh, so yeah, we're we're cleaning up the demo. And uh, Evan, just as heads up to you, I post on the uh, internal chat the a default YAML config that might be useful for you to figure out how to pass config down if you need to pass config down. 
Okay. I figured I was just going to look at one of the existing checks and then adjust it. So, yeah. Let's see. These colors are terrible. Uh, okay, well, I guess we'll live with it. I don't know if anyone can read these, but um, we have an API directory that defines um, some. Uh, I'm guessing these look like they might be sort of Kubernetes objects, but it looks like it's a dynamic interface in a uh, only a spec. And then let's see. Let me cover a question from the chat real quick. Yeah, we yeah, someone for. was asking about like why not set this as a policy. Yeah, we have both, so we're looking to uh, OPA gatekeeper as well. Um, and uh, to so kind of the, the sibling project, right? So this is the scanner. We have the reliability policies project that is sibling uh, of this one. So to cover, kind of cover on both sides, right? Kind of like Evan was explaining. Sometimes you don't know they need to have the policy. Um, so we've got something here that um, it looks like we have something for disruption budgets already. So I am just going to clone that and get started there. Yeah, this one is just checking if there is a disruption budget. Uh, Okay. Um. Let's see. So it looks like we're going to get a client set and a spec Spec is empty. Oh, we should probably change this name to pod image. And the runner with the query. Looks like that's something we don't really need to change. Create a new one of these with a spec. Looks like we don't need to change any of that. Start this thing. Um, internal report item. We set the status to past. We list. We get an error. We set the check to failed. We list all the pods. Um, hey, here we go. Peter Grant also said we have a README on the repository three on how to uh, contribute it. So I don't know if there's like more details there. I'm just realizing this Emacs is not set up for Go. I make everything sad. Um, so. I am realizing. There is an editor yeah, here. The question about visualization and logs for reliability scanner. It's like, yeah, it's now purely logs. So we, don't have, we don't have anything that is easier to make it uh, visualize elsewhere, like Prometheus or anything like that. Uh, yeah, happy to uh, to look into the suggestions here on how to, like, how I, I guess how folks in the community would like to consume that kind of report. Um, it will be useful for us to know. So I'm realizing that. Uh, Emacs is probably not going to be a great tool here because I don't have it set up appropriately. Um, so here we are. Is this font big enough or do people need me to make it bigger? OK. 
can read it. It's a little blurry, but I can read it. I don't know if folks can read on chat. Yeah. Let's see. So we're going through and we're creating a check item and then we're listing all the namespaces and we're listing, well, we don't need covered anymore. I'm editing the backup file. You are right, I'm editing the backup file. Uh, don't save. I wanted to delete that backup file, but instead um, it just didn't work. Um, so we are listing all of the core V1 pods. If there's an error anywhere in here, we set the check to failed. Um, let's see, this is a pod. Uh, Anyone remember what the timestamp in here is? Otherwise, we will just go look at API. Oh, wait. Top level API is always. Uh, where do these live? Um. Let's see. Always interesting to see just how much my browser suffers when going through the documentation here. Uh, creation timestamp. That's what I was looking for. Thank you. I knew chat would be faster than actually looking it up myself. Stamp. Now I'm wondering is that thing a string? Oh, package name up top is wrong. Thank you. So. Creation timestamp is a time, but it's a meta v1 time, not a go time. Correct marshalling and otherwise, it's just a regular time. Great. Um, and there is right now and then after. Okay. And uh, 
uh, sub. Okay. So this is, we're just going to write now hard code the th hard code the threshold to one hour old, and. It's failed. Um, so this is getting all the pod disruption budgets and then looking to see if it's not a sauna boy pod then we check to see if it's got a disruption budget and we pass it for this particular thing. Looks like there's an internal dot item. And what do we do with? We add it in here. So let's see up here. Look, that if be awfully sad. I was just going to fail everything. Uh, and let's see. Check that items. Pench. Items. looks like the format of these is pretty simple so we just have a string Wonder if I'm going to get in trouble for only reporting failed things, but we're going to give that a go. And then we just have a lot less code here. And let's see. Does the readme tell me how to build this thing? Make run. I don't have YTT installed. Just download a file from the internet, run it, why not? warnings and then I did something wrong um, yeah so Peter's saying you need to build and publish the other changes um, as a docker image oh um, 
So we need to. I think we have those instructions somewhere. Peter, would you mind putting on chat? I think we have. I definitely have this in the in the demo machine. Do we have that in the repo? Uh, I see a roadmap. I see a contributors. Oh no, that's just names of people. Uh, yeah, the README. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, it's in the make file. So check the make file. Okay. Oh, it's a comment in the make file. Oh, there's a Docker build. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, oh, I don't have Docker running there. Um, let me. One more file I wanted. I'm going to move this over. <laughs> uh, so, for those of you who aren't familiar, um, Co is a tool that uh, takes a, a Go binary and converts it into a very small image without needing um, Docker installed. So, okay. Oh, I need to configure get here. Uh, Okay, now let me sh share a different screen. Uh, here we go. Yes, I do want that folder. Uh, let's see. Really uh, scary. Okay. Well, um, did you want to? Did you have a demo that was working that you wanted to show, Gustavo? 
It's going to take me a moment to get things working over here. Let's see. Um, let me run this again. It's going to overwrite this. Ben suggests that I might have just been able to use Co um, on the reliability scanner to make an image. Yeah. So we finally have uh, backup working. So okay. So what did I do? Let's recap. Um, so it's still deleting Sonoboy Boy in this one, but um, so I check for. Before we didn't have a backup passing, right? So, like, do I have something complete and passed? Yes. The staleness is a different check, by the way. So, the staleness check you can ignore. Um, so, the backup one is complete and passed. So, I have backups. And then compared to no backups, and it tells me the name of the backup, plural, status fail, no backups defined. So, this is the diff of no backups and backups. So, fail to pass. Um, let's see if the expire is still there. Um, so it's not expired now because we just ran, right? So I think the default is set to five hours. So then I don't have an expire backup now. So then it's still passing. So that's for this uh, first check. Backup freshness pod, uh, sorry, backup freshness. Um, as you can see in the logs, we have a little bit more. So like the staleness is there, but it's passing. Uh, so it's not really interesting um, to talk about. But um, we have pod probes, if probes are you know available or not. And uh, namespaces, if you namespace has an honor set. And uh, QoS, if there's a minimal desirable QoS, disruption of backup freshness. We can run all the checks at once against you know the cluster, but just you know for the sake of this exercise, we're just focusing on backup freshness uh, in this one. That's about it. Anything else you want to explore, Evan? Um, what what are you doing there? Oh, I was just trying to get the build going. Um, let me see. And uh, yeah, it looks like the combination of make and Docker is not something that this machine has readily available. Um, everyone could watch me get Docker working with Windows Subsystem for Linux, but that doesn't really seem like the best use of people's time. Mm -hmm. Do, do you have uh, KO? Because Ben is saying KO publish. No. Um, do you see us on chat? I tried fetching a co version. Um, let me see if I can get that working. Although it doesn't end up with a command. Um, I was looking at the Docker file, and at the end, you define a command for the reliability scanner. And I don't know how critical it is that. Um, that it run as a Docker image without needing the command specified. Um, it looks like it takes an argument scan that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's. If we build with Co, it's not going to be there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Let's see. I can give it a try. That's what happens. Let's see. Do you want to share your screen? Yeah, just a moment. Uh, that's the wrong screen.
exec format error. Uh, yeah, 32 bits. All right, so I'll be cranky about that. Oh, it's a charge zip. Wow. I thought you had a binary now. Did you? Oh, you, uh, moved it. you, you moved the tarball. Yeah, I, I moved see. it, you but moved. it's a tarball. It's not a. Um, yeah. It's not actually a thing I can execute. So. Mm -hmm. Let's try it. Let's see. Okay. Now we have a code that we can execute. So let's try that. I probably need to authenticate to a registry, but let's see what this does. Yeah. Uh. running team in. Oh, I did not want to do that on video. Let's see. Okay. Uh, do I? Let's see. Okay. Uh, give me just a moment, and I should have a Docker login going, and then we can publish this. Uh, We're building a bunch of stuff.
Okay, now I have things logged in. Uh, let's try that again. Building the image. Entry point met command. Um, code doesn't support its answering this question. Um, code doesn't use its own login. It uses the standard Docker credential keychain. Um, so I needed to do a Azure ACR login and um, feed that into the Docker login command. And now I have a dot .docker config that um, has my Azure credentials in there. And I'm not going to show that to you because I don't really want to have to burn those credentials and come up with new ones. Um, so we've built a new image here. Um, you can see that Co will print out the name of the image um, with a SHA-1 digest. And then it looks like that sh this is going to do basically the same thing that this um, that this uh, Docker file does, except it's going to use my environment's Golang. And so it's going to build this reliability scanner binary. And then from distroless base, it's going to do the same copy. Instead of copying it from this build, um, it's just going to copy it from a local file into the image. And then it's not going to set command, but it sounds like Ben looked and the actual binary that we're going to use um, doesn't need that. So let's go back and look at the make file. And I need to set registry and image. So let's see, export registry. And then image equals reliability. Uh, equals this thing. This should work fine there. And we should be able to do a make run. And um, pod updates. It looks like. Uh, Maybe I need to delete the Sonoboy pod. Um, is that possible? Yeah, because I'd run Sonoboy once before, and it looks like maybe Sonoboy is creating a pod directly. Uh, yes, it is. So, I would, so, yeah, can't I would run some, I would run some boy delete just to be sure that there, there's nothing left over. Oh, you're right. Let's see. Where did I have some boy? Okay. Um, that was a dumb place for it. Okay. Okay. Now let's see if we run this. Oh, it looks like so if I don't run, there we go. 
Um, it looks like Sonoboy delete if I don't pass wait. Um, just puts in delete requests for everything and walks away. And so things were still deleting the first time I tried make run. But now it looks like the run happened successfully. It's complete. So I should be able to say some trees. And we get one passed. I might have been expecting more out more output than that. Should I have been? <laughs> the bundle has more stuff. So that's you know my logs when I was showing it's the bundle. So you can get the tarball and uh, oh. we can look. Yeah. Okay. How do I do? I just need to fetch that manually. Like I'm not sure what. Like so, there's a targy zip listed here. Um. Oh, and it's yeah, down. Okay. In Nordic file, we also have make results, and you can uh, see that. Oh, so okay. Here we file. go. This is all of our stuff. Um. Plugins, reliability scanner. Um, so, oh, so it looks like inside the reliability scanner, we get um, some YAML files and some other results. So let's see. What did we call this again? What's this called? This was called plugins. realizing that maybe I shouldn't have done this here, but it looks like it's not um, it's not part of my uh, it's not one of the directories that I already had. So I paste the, the command so it's kind of long. So it's like on the internal chat. So it's on a boy results, mo detail, plugin, reliability scanner, and then the file, the the tarball. Okay. Yeah. Uh, take a look at that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And yeah, for folks, you know, uh, in the audience to uh, to simplify the reliability scanner plugin and the make file, we have like the shortcuts. So if you make results, we kind of run that for you. You're gonna see what Evan's running now to kind of get to the detailed results for the reliability scanner run. So that's basically, yeah, you can see that Sonoboy results, no detail. Um, um, yeah, result mode is detailed, and then you specify which plugin. Yeah. And let's see. This is the disruption budget. We have a lot of things that aren't disrupt disruption budget. We have a bunch of things with the wrong QoS class. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is super grumpy about your reliability right. posture. <laughs> um, liveness probes and stuff, owners on namespaces, labels and staleness. Interestingly, the one thing I don't see here. Did you is... name it pod age? Do you want to search for pod age? Yeah, that's what I was going to. Yeah. So pod age isn't in there. Let's see. But I do wonder if you if we name, like have we tagged in the code? I don't know if we have either. I was yeah. just gonna figure that out next. Yeah. Uh, managing disruption budget. Yeah, we should probably take a look there and see. Okay, um, let's see. Um, reliability scanner. Config.go. Yeah, oh, look. Disruption, it looks yeah. like we probably need to go in here to that config.go in the command and wire things in. Yeah. I was kind of suspicious when it 
actually built for right away. I was like, that can't possibly be my. Yeah, it just didn't press. Yeah, and then you you also need to name the package uh, pod h because you have a package name disruption. Your pod h dot go package name is disruption. Um, I thought I had. Uh, oh, I fixed that. oh, never mind. Someone yeah, someone mentioned it to me earlier. Oh, that's the backup. Uh, oh yeah, the backup file is yeah. garbage. But were you adding the backup? Let's make sure that you know. Uh, I didn't add the backup. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, but I don't know if I'm going to commit this anyway. Um, let's see. Let's see. Uh, yeah, the backup file has that in several places. Uh, there's disruption. And then there's a default ytt.yaml that has it too. Uh, and plug in. Let's see, somewhere in here we have what is this? Resources. Uh, I don't know what this is, but I'm inclined to assume. Yeah, Peter was calling out the configuration. Oh, no, these are these are actual Kubernetes resources. So it's named pod disruption budgets. Um, so I don't need yeah. this config. This config config uh, should be it. Is an in is a JSON file in a config map, but it looks like I don't need it. Uh, I I am going to guess that resources here are the types of resources that are created and therefore that we need um, permissions for. That's a lot of different things, but that looks a lot like a, um, well, the first part of that looked a lot like a cluster role and a cluster role binding. So I'm hoping that we don't need it. Um, I do need to do a go publish again. Let's try that again. Uh, forgot to import time. And something on line 87. Oh. Oh, this is. Any, oh, I do need to send back my check item. Don't think I need to log any of this other stuff right now. So, do that and input time at the top. And let's see. Can I use. Uh, 
Uh, oh. Uh, how do I subtract a duration? Uh, type time. Uh, we should have in the backup code. Oh, I can add a negative duration. Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, oh, but creation time stamp. Uh, Creation timestamp is an embedded time. Oh, so I need a meta v1 time, not Now we are discovering just how annoying it is when you wrap go types. Oh, um, I think the error might have been container D used by both CRIO and Podman, but. Um, I think that CRIO and Podman are the affected pieces of software, um, noting on Eric's correction. Um, cut, convert type time to, why not? New time is supposed to return. Uh, I look into how the backup task is doing the conversion. Or if Peter, you have like a, a quick one-liner. Uh, I can also take a look. But um, uh, so seventy-two. Threshold. So that is a type time dot time. Uh, oh, I need to use new time, not try to make it a cast. Uh, name spaces. Declare the name. Great, last code. Thank you, Go.
That looks promising. And we should be able to make run again because I exported. Oh. Um, so one other thing that Co will do by default is it will append a hash of the name of the binary, which is going to change every time. Um, this helps you avoid cases where Docker has cached the old image name. Um, but in this case, it means that we need to update that export. It will just keep running with the old image. So let's see. Uh, yeah, we got some kind of white again. <laughs> some white delete and then run, make run. It said that it had configured the pod, but I'm suspicious. Let's see. Yeah. It does seem like you might need to be um, a little bit careful with Sana Boy to, um, to run delete after each run. It would be nice if there was sort of a continuous mode that you could have it on in, like a like a probe. And... That's still going. Nothing now. There we go. You can do you can do results straight from that. Yeah, long, I just wanted long. to get the long results. Still don't see pod age in here. I said things that were older than an hour, so there should probably be some. Creating host results, uh, running plugin reliability. Where are you, where are you looking for right now? I wanted to see if it was actually running my new image. Oh, gotcha. If not, then um, I'm definitely sure that it's not going to. Maybe image ID? Uh, yeah. Oh, but it, it ran a pod and then deleted it for the plugin, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, but I should be able to see that somewhere. When I did that make run, it printed some stuff out. I wonder if the logs would contain that. It should, right? Oh. Well, let's see. If we do that. That should clean things up. And then we can run it again and. Um, See what it makes. I was actually, before we do that, 
one thing I was wondering about was in config.go, we added this case, but I don't know where that got used. Uh, oh, there's this plugin reliability scanner custom values lib. That's the config, um, but do so. Do we have the pod page on config? I, no? uh, we didn't add pod age in there. <laughs> config or the config? Uh, I'm guessing that we need to do something like this. Yeah, but before we do that, do we have it in config? Yeah, we just add, uh, we just added it to config. Go. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, I did a copy of disruption here, and it's right down here. But um, yeah. I never actually asked it to run it. So yeah, yeah, we forgot to edit the config. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my fault. <laughs> I love the description. Uh, do I actually need to include a spec here if I've got no arguments? No, we don't nope. have any little detail there, right? We don't. No. I mean, ideally, you'd put something like an actual age limit there, but I was lazy. Right, right. So, um, let's see. This is done. So let's try make run. And uh, let's see. Um, Let's see. Oh, look, here is our one of our configurations. This was the one we didn't need to change. So I bet the plugins is the one that we did need to change. Oh, look, that's beautiful. Plugin zero.yaml. And then um, here's the command to use. And uh oh. That image doesn't look like the image that I'd want. Um, and then there's another config map that. Ah, uh, you know what? Did you do make run? Can you open the make file? I wonder. Do we have this hard code on the make file? Uh, ah, yeah. Maybe we need to change the make file. <laughs> yeah, but then we have um, variables on top, so then you can just change it a little bit. I tried exporting variables, but I don't know that I did it the right way. Uh, no, yeah, take a look at the make file. This is, yeah. Yeah, I see these. Um, but if I echo registry echo image, hmm. um, but it may be that I need to set them in make in some other way because I try not to use yeah. make if I get to if I can avoid it. Uh, yeah. I'll just overwrite in the make file right now. Yeah. Um, well, it should still be interesting to look at um, it's still running interesting Let's see. Uh, waiting for wait file. Uh, let's see. 
what? Let's see what this says it's doing. looks like it's just working. That's interesting. It looks like it doesn't produce an error um, in if you ask for a check it doesn't know about. Well, I'm going to clean this up. And oops. And then try and make run again and see if we can get our plugin actually running. Uh, uh, actually, I had one question about this. Is the YAML configuration that you put in the config map uh, somewhere here, the reliability scanner custom values lib? Um, is this something that's needed by Sonoboy or just the way that you happen to structure your checks? Just not needed by Sonoboy at all. Just the way we, we because it's, you can think of the reliability scanner as a plugin of plugins, right? Because each check is sort of, you know, like a plugin on its own. So we had a yeah. way to centrally configure that within the reliability scanner plugin. So no, Sonoboy does not require this at all. So people who are doing this, um, if you're not trying to add to the reliability scanner, um, you may not need to build some of these other components. And you may be able to just have a single binary. But here is um, yeah. checks for backups. Yeah, we're trying to add a Here's track. our configuration. Yeah, we can see that we've added pod ages. And then. Um, and then if we get this config map, we should see. Uh, yeah, first oh. is something about image references or the YAML files under plugin. If you'd like to update these, you'll publish image. Yeah, it looks like the can our make run here didn't actually update this uh, this field. So plug in. Oh yeah, there we go. It's nice and hard coded there. So let's see. Yeah. Uh, uh, and you have to clarify for the audience, like we're saying, right? This is just needed uh, if you're trying to develop a new check. So the reliability scanner plugin. If you're just trying to run, you don't need to do any of this. It's just that that demo that I did. It's just like basically three commands and you're done. Yeah, this is this is. I wanted to know how hard it was to um, do the request of, hey, we should make sure there's no pods more than I picked an hour old because that would actually give us some results. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's still painful to add checks. Uh, we haven't really tried anyone else. Like now, I feel like I have fifty to dos going on a list here. Of that's that's the whole point of this. Is exactly yeah. You try you you put someone in who knows nothing, and they go and trip over all the logs, and you're like, oh, maybe we should take the logs away from the entryway and put them over in the woodshed. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. We, we definitely need to improve the developer experience. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I'm not sure how the best way to parameterize this is, but it's super surprising that the image is hard coded here, but that you also have parameters for it in the make file, which I'm guessing get used for Docker build and Docker push. Um, but you could probably pass them in as, as arguments to YTT here as well. Yeah, exactly. This isn't about YTT, so I'm not going to do that. 
Um, and then let's see plugins. Just want to make sure that. Wait. Did I forget to save this or something? Because this still has that image. Base.yaml. Uh, That's saved. Um, this has got some other stuff. Oh. Of course, there's a base.yaml in here, but it's overridden by default ytt.yaml, or maybe they are separate. So I found the wrong one. Uh, let's try this. And... Let's see, there's the end of that config map. And let's see. Okay. And then let's see, base.yaml. It looks like base.yaml is just a pod and maybe it's referenced elsewhere, but um, looks like default ytt.yaml is what we should have been editing. Yeah. Uh, oh, base.yaml is used for results, but, or for generate. Button things started again. Let's look one more time at the plugins config map. And here we go. Now our image should actually run. Let's see. Go. Let's see. Waiting for wait file. Is there an easy way? Um, that's an internal IP address. Um, let's see if I. Forward. Yeah, it's a little strange. It should be done by now, right? Because all we did was to add a check. So now it's why it takes so long to run. Let's see. Oh, I can't use AD80. Okay, let's see. 
Okay, that one backwards. That's not working. It looks like there's um, execute port forward in namespace. Let's see. Oh, it's got a start error. Great. Okay. Yeah, I can see that the sun is also successfully pulled him in. Uh, stat bin reliability scanner. Oh, we put the reliability scanner in a different place um, with Co, is my guess. Let's see. Uh, where does it, where does it actually put? Because we're overriding the endpoint. I don't remember. Um, yeah, we do have a Docker file. Uh, yeah, I was having trouble with make plus Docker mm -hmm. um, plus push. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just trying to remember, Co is putting the binary in a different place. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember where that is, but... Uh, Do you want to get in and find it? I was... Yeah, I was going to try doing that. Um, uh, Do I have to? Um, let's see. Those of you who haven't seen Dive, um, it's a pretty cool tool for taking apart um, Docker images. Image. Um, oh, but it wants the Docker daemon. Um, 
Does anyone remember? Yeah. Um, so this is, I feel like we're this close and I just needed to figure out where that is. And unfortunately, I can't just like execute it and poke around in there because remember these are built from the um, distroless images that don't have a shell. <laughs> um. Let's see. Publish. Layout. Let's see. I feel like it was co-app, but uh... yeah, I'm trying to find it in the documentation, but it's not. Yeah, report. I mean, it it never really like. Actually, um, it seems like maybe the easier thing would be that we are somewhere here. We are overriding the command and what if we instead set args and then you don't need to know where the binary is it's just going to use whatever the default is um, And then we don't need to figure that out. Although I'm kind of curious, so I'm probably going to anyway. Hey, okay. Here we go. Pod age. Here we go. It's failed. And here are a whole bunch of pods that are older than. Yeah, here we go. One more check. <laughs> oh. It only took. Wanna, it looked like. 90 it, minutes. If we were actually going to do this, we'd want to go in here and add a duration that you could parse out to add duration for age. And then we'd use that down here with the spec instead of saying one time negative one times hour. Um, you would put something reasonable in there instead. And then you'd be done. So um, uh, yeah, yeah. I think the lesson learned for uh, for us here is it takes thirty minutes to add a check, but like an hour of pain to actually you know <laughs> build and test. And so we need to simplify that development. Experience. It would be really nice if you could auto generate a stub from here or have some way to automatically figure out. Oh, hey, here was a check that was added. Um, you know, maybe you want to hook it into this other config file that's in a different place. Um, if you look, there's actually three places. So I needed to put my check here. I needed to put my check in config.go and I needed to put my check over here. 
Um, and thinking yeah. about the code in config.go, actually. Um, uh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. And it's great that we have this recorded now. So um, the team's going to rewatch this 30 times. <laughs> so I'm noticing that right now we have a switch on the kind here. It would be really easy to change this into a map from kind to a method. Um, and if you had that, then you could have a second command, which took that map and output a um, and output this YAML um, automatically. And so you would just fill in this map here, and then you'd have a command that you ran that Perfect. filled out the values for the YAML without needing, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. without needing to bookkeep twice, without needing mm -hmm. a human to bookkeep twice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's great. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, but we, we found all of the old pods and we can actually double check that because um, you can run just a cube control get pod dash A for all namespaces. And other than discovering that a few of these pod names are really long, um, you can see that, yeah, almost all of them are three hours old at this point. And if we really wanted to check, we could put the barrier at like four hours and then see which ones fall out here. Awesome. Well, I learned a lot. Um, and. Uh, Hopefully this has been useful to people. Um, I would definitely say if you're looking at making um, like tests and configuration checks repeatable, um, look at at least this framework. You don't necessarily need to um, break things out in the modular way that they've done. You can just have a bunch of different plugins for Sonoboy. But um, mm -hmm. you know, if <laughs> if I can sit down knowing only the cube API and within an hour or so have a working check for something that someone came up with on chat, um, you can do. Exactly. Yeah. Use on a boy, use reliable scanner, send us feedback. Uh, and there's links to those in the notes. Um, I didn't actually end up using Dive, so um, I didn't link to that. The fun tool, but. Um, doesn't count if I don't use it. <laughs> and I think we've linked to almost all the tools that we used. So please push it directly. <laughs> uh, I did a bunch of stuff that you don't want me to push directly, like uh, hardwiring in the, um, the container URL in two different places. So. Uh, I will not do that, but I may send a pull request that someone else can take over. Absolutely. Yeah, we appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> and it was fun seeing all of you. Um, I need to go get ready because I'm going to go do a run. All right. Enjoy your run. Thank you very much. Thanks, folks. Good to see Time you. Time to enjoy the sunshine. See you all next week. Cheers.